Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video as well as uh, Faria's Friday feature. Um, we're now back and joining me in studio, Marcuson Des Des Desrosier. Um, uh, he is from Haiti, he's a Haitian. Uh, he's a student here in Guyana. And with him uh, to his left is Melissa Smith, who is a Guyanese student 
and actually both of us are being tutored in Creole with, along with Shailene Wilkinson was on the show yesterday and the day before um, by Markinson, so we learn Haitian Creole. Joining us again on um, uh, online, we have um, Mr. Omar Moro. He's Dominican, but he's joining us from Arizona. And David Hines, Dr. David Hines, joining us also from Arizona. And connected now uh, from Haiti is Mr. Mark Jacobs. Mark Jacobs is a Guyanese, but he's been doing phenomenal work. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Noah. Hello, good morning. Thank you. And welcome. Oh, there are two marks. I don't know. So, yeah, so I don't so know so if you can turn the volume up for me. I can't, I can't hear what's going on quite well. Okay, okay. Um, uh, we're joined here by Markinson and Melissa. So just welcoming you, Mark, to the show. Uh, Melissa also, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, thank you. All right. Uh, Markinson. Yes. You lived in Haiti. You were there during the coup d'etat in 2004. You were there, um, the earthquake in 2010. Tell us about your experiences in Haiti as a Haitian during those times. Um, I can say uh, that those last um, four past years uh, was a little um, difficult for Haiti. And as a Haitian that has been a victim of all of that, the, the cyclones, the, the epidemic of cholera, and the, the coup d'etat, and all of the stuff, I can say the last um, past five years has been really hard for all of the Haitians that has been in the country at this time. And um, personally, I can say that, for example, um, the earthquake is the more the more helpful experience a human being can 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 experience. Right? Was really really hard and. Once I just reminded, I just feel sad again. Yeah, it was terrible. I understand. Yeah. You, you lost friends in that earthquake. Um, yes, I, lo I lost a lot of friends and, uh, and not family, but some family has been uh, severely injured. And my sister personally was, was has been hurt in her school. And I, um, the university I was going was collapsed and a lot of student die and um, some lecturers too they die mm. yeah um, yours is a story of survival though I, I you know you, you it's, it's 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 resilience and and I think the themes that we have had here for this program um, since we started on Wednesday has been the story of resilience and Haiti's example to the world uh, in that story of resilience and I think yours is that story is an embodiment of that story of resilience um, how do you view this question of a shared identity with the Caribbean? Do you feel a like Guyanese when you're here in Guyana? Um, actually, it's only when I talk that people can like can perceive that I have a different accent. But um, we are black, and I feel really comfortable. And it's only when I when I speak the the not that I'm not Guyanese, so I can tell I feel comfortable. You feel comfortable. Yeah. So you view the the, the thing as the the the, the 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 thing about identity as being something that can that can work more or less. The shared identity with the Caribbean community can work. Melissa, you're taking Creole classes. Yes I am. Um Marcuson is lecturing to us in, in, in Creole. How did you find those classes? Well they were a wonderful experience because not only were we learning a new language, we were also learning about a new culture and we were Sinking with our Haitian brothers. <laughs> sinking or thinking or both? <laughs> both as you can say. Okay, so sink, not sink, S-I-N-K, but sink, S-Y-N-C, yes. which is to synchronize. Um, so we are indeed synchronizing. And, and I think that for me personally, the experience of being with the, uh, with the Creole class, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting. And it does give you an opportunity. And you know, I learned a few words. Um, one of my best words is poussier, yes. which <laughs> means soil. Yes. It means soil earth. and earth, and that is a significant word. And we started to talk on Wednesday about um, about the soil uh, and the significance of the soil, the significance of land to the Haitian people. So I think that, that is fundamental. Um, this this idea of bridging ourselves and language communication becomes central in that conversation. So therefore, when we're able to speak 
in a way that others can understand, we can understand them too. So I think that a starting point, an important starting point in talking about shared identity is of course talking about that, um, that experience. Mark Jacobs, I want to bring you in here. You, you are in Haiti. Um, tell us about your experiences in Haiti. I could only hear one person speaking. I, I wasn't able to hear what you guys were discussing before. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Uh, what, tell us about your experience could in you Haiti. The, could you turn the volume up so I can hear you better? Um, okay. You hearing me now? I don't know if that's possible. You hearing me? Okay, go ahead. Okay, you, go ahead. Yeah, what, 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 uh, how would you describe your experience in Haiti? How would I describe my experience? Yes. Oh, uh, there's, there's, there's been, uh, many, many positives, many negatives, but overall, I would say, uh, uh good. You mean in terms of perception here, or? Sorry? You mean in, in terms of my reception with the people, or, uh, Yes, your interaction with the people as well as the work that you're doing. Uh, you can describe for us what you're doing there in Haiti. Your overall experience. I'm not. I'm not hearing you. I'll just stop for for a while and maybe you guys hear me. But uh, I'm just here working on a, on a few uh, projects. They've been success and they've been they've been failure. But uh, we're still trying to make make things happen in terms of. Uh, at agricultural production because the main focus is to work with a few organizations in, in producing food uh, being self-sufficient in at least a few items. It's difficult because you're starting from zero, at least the organizations I'm working with. So it's, it's an uphill task uh, working with people. Many are, many are illiterate. Uh, some have no agricultural background. There's a, uh, even though we're in Haiti and the, we know the, uh, hello? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I can hear you. We're hearing you. Okay. So even though you're here and uh, given the history and everything else, there's still, there's still many people who, who are not knowledgeable about agriculture. So there's a, uh, a, a lot of training has to, to take place. I mean, there, there's a lot of agriculture taking place there, but, uh, not as we know it in Guyana, because of a uh, lack of lack of services from the government, extension services. So I mean, if you're a farmer in, in a rural area and you you're unable to read or write, and you're not getting any input or uh, information from say an extension officer, the ministry. I mean, your your agriculture will stagnate because there's only so much you you yourself gonna come up with in your head. Okay. Tell us, which part of Haiti are you in? So, I'm working with, within the city itself. The, uh, well, it's on the outskirts. It's part, it's part of the city. It's called Penny. Uh, I'm also working at City Soleil. And uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the different areas. But these are all parts of Port au Prince, Greater Port au Prince, I guess you can call it. Yes, actually, we, we started the, the series by showing a video what's going on in Haiti, and it featured people protesting in City Soleil back in 2006. Uh, and that was two years after the coup d'etat that, that forced, um, that forced uh, Aristide out of, out of government and out of Haiti, in fact, at the time. How do you tell us a little bit about your interactions, Mark, with the people of Haiti? Your, your interactions day to day with, with the Haitian people and this question of a shared identity. This has been our conversation this morning, um, fostering a shared identity. Tell us a little bit about your personal I don't interactions. Have any problem. In terms of interaction with Haitians, uh, well, I don't have any problems because most Haitians think I'm Haitian, so there is no, uh, there is no problem in terms of uh, actually. I have a harder time sometimes with people I'm not Haitian, <laughs> so I don't. I I generally don't get into that conversation. I just if once people assume I'm Haitian, so I, I just go with that. I I don't wanna get 
there's a discussion about where I'm from. So we just proceed as normal. Yeah. It's sad that you weren't able to hear him, but Markinson Desrouzi, who is in the studio with us, he is from Haiti. And he, too, was, um, was saying that until he speaks here in Guyana, you know, people don't know that he's Haitian. All right? So I think that's very significant. Um, we want to get to some closing, some well, closing comments. Let me, let me add. Well, I think one of the things is, well, because of the, uh, the, I mean, and there are many sort of, I, I know many people in Guyana don't like to hear it, but there are many similarities between Haiti and Guyana. And I, I would say uh, the major difference between Guyana and Haiti for me is uh, the population. Uh, it's just, it's just Guyana with 9 million more people. So for, for many Guyanese, that, that, that might be a hard fact to digest, but many Guyanese haven't been to Haiti, so. Okay. So in closing, uh, and we'll go around, we'll start with you, Mark. If you can tell us, how do you see the future for Haiti in the Caribbean? Being that you are Guyanese and you are in Haiti, so in one minute, how do you see that? How do I, how do I see the future? Yes. Okay. In a minute. Firstly, there, there are many challenges, and uh, there, there's going to continue to be many challenges because of uh, environmental issues. There is the uh, issue with the occupation and the repression by the uh, international community, the, U the UN. There is the international political intrigue and uh, politics of uh, destroying the country, keeping it in, in a plantation-like state. Uh, there is also the ongoing issues with education, health, and uh, infrastructure. So. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the future is not right, but it's, it's going to be very difficult going ahead. And uh, because people have to overcome many challenges on a daily basis. Okay. And, uh, the external forces uh, exerting pressure on the country is it, uh, immense, relentless, and it's 24-7. Uh, okay. So, so going ahead, uh, the, the future is going to be very, very difficult because every day, every, every second of every day is a battle. Okay. Um, Omar, uh, you, you are in Arizona. Um, you are Dominican. How do you see the future in closing in a minute? With regards to Haiti? Yes. Haiti and our shared identity. How do you well, see the future? I, I'd have to echo the brother's sentiments. I mean, I, I, I believe uh, part of the problem with Haiti is the investment. Part of the problem with Haiti is the investment of the international community. Um, and, and with that, I mean, it, 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 it's almost debilitating because the are you are you there, Omar? Is uh, going to take um, it, it, it doesn't help with the conditions of the almost two hundred thousand now stateless Dominican and Haitian migrants that have been forced. You have to return back to a, a, a to a, a, a situation of, of dire compromise. So, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's going to have to take quite a bit of uh, reaching across the tables in trying to really see what are the commonly shared experiential uh, realities upon which the Dominican Haitians begin to have that discussion on how to help one another. But uh, to be quite honest, from the Dominican perspective, uh, there, there's a lot of baggage that comes with that uh, that is part of the Dominican history uh, that has raced the Haitians. So in closing, Dominicans need to see Haitians first before they can even begin to have that conversation. And in doing so, they'll acknowledge quite a bit about their own oh, that, um, national yeah. narrative. Oh, yes, that's, that's, that's uh, um, in a word, less than a minute to both of you. How do you see the future? I'll start with you, Melissa. How do you see the future? You're taking Creole classes. Do you plan on going to Haiti? Maybe that should be your thing. Well, Markinson here is my very good friend and he's already extended an invitation to me. So definitely I'll be going to Haiti soon, as soon as I get the finances. But for the future, I think we as a Car Caribbean, we have a responsibility to help Haiti. 
whether it's in moral support, financial support, whatever it is, we have a responsibility because they're they're our example of striving for what you want. Okay, that's excellent. Markinson, as a Haitian, how do you see the future? Well, I I, I will I have a, a optimist perception about the future. Optimist is English, right? Yes, like optimist is English. Positive, yeah, yes, yeah. the future because um, we have been doing a lot a lot of problem and. We're still here and we're still going forward. And there is a, an Haitian quote that say like, when you are in the ground, when you are when you are down, you have only one option is to stand up and yeah. to go forward. So I stay optimist. Um, presently, they have some some um, relative peace. I mean, and the, in the, the society, system, yeah. yeah, relatively to what used to happen. There is a little um, considerable change in terms of infrastructure when I went to Haiti for, for summer last year. So I see they have, they have this willing, this will to make some progress. The only problem is like um, the people, the leader, they can put themselves together. They have the same goals, but they see things different way. And because of that, a lot of conflicts like come up between them. And this is what like keep Holding the country. Uh, yeah, hold, holding back. But I, s I keep being optimistic and I think there is a, a good future. Uh, Dr. Heinz, in one word, how do you see the future? We are just at program time. Well, um, I think the future depends on the kind of conversation we're able to have. We in the English speaking Caribbean are, uh, apart from Haiti, based on language. And so we have to find other ways of connecting with Haiti. And the thing that binds us with Haiti um, most is our Africanness. And insofar as we continue to have an engagement with our Africanness, then we will be able to keep connecting with uh, Haiti. Um, insofar as we try to silence that engagement with our Blackness and with our Africanness, we will have a very difficult time in connecting with Haiti as we should. Thank you very much. Dr. Heinz, and this has been Haiti Stands, a special presentation of the Haiti Solidarity Group in celebration observation of, uh, observance of the International Days of Solidarity with Haiti. Thank you, and see you some other time. Bye-bye.